Hi, this is Patrick Murray. One of the reasons why I'm so excited about Node-RED is because it really makes it easy to interact with all different kinds of web services without becoming a web developer. As a Navy programmer, I'm used to dealing with serial, infrared, and all of those things, so I don't really want to have to learn how to deal with web APIs and things like that. And Node-RED really makes it easy to uh, just send out a command and get a response with different web services. And one of the most interesting web services out there that could really be interesting for AV systems and smart homes is IFTTT. So let's take a look at that. It's um, if this, then that. And if you're not familiar with it, basically what it does is it um, takes an action from wherever. And then on the other side, it could do something. So it takes a trigger on one side and it performs an action on the other. And it's all web-based and it's really easy. So end users would be able to do things with it. So if you exposed a few triggers from your AV system or smart home, then uh, somebody could log in to their system and um, whenever that happens, then they could do whatever they want with it. And there's tons in of integrations here. As you can see, there's Alexa, they've got um, all sorts of stuff. You could um, interact with Google Sheets, so you could start collecting data in a spreadsheet, um, no, uh, location services, notifications, all sorts of different stuff. So have a look at that. I set up a brand new account here and I'm going to show you how to trigger an action with Node-RED. So let's get started here. We'll just go to My Applets and um, we'll create a new one. And then we'll click over here if this, so the this is going to be a webhook and that's what will receive a message from Node-RED. So we'll click on that and we'll say connect. So we've got our trigger here, receive a web request, and we'll click on that. And um, we'll give our event a name. And here we'll just say, I don't know, we'll just call it test request. And that's what um, we'll send over from Node-RED, and that's how it knows what request we're dealing with. So we could set up all different requests. We could set, make an event for report lamp hours, uh, an event for system was turned on, an event for system was occupied right motion was detected anything you want so we'll create that trigger and then on the other side we'll say what we're going to do with it and um so that will be i don't know whatever it is let's just uh for now we could just send ourselves an email or an sms or but you could do all of these things you could interact with all of these integrations here it's uh it's really really powerful so for now i'll just send myself an email and uh, this will send an email to to my account and that's about it. I'll select that. And here we see all the stuff we could do. So I could access variables in that trigger. I get the event name. I have to have an event name at least. But um, we could also, <clears throat> excuse me, we could also add values. And I'll show you how to do that too. So you could say lamp hours equals whatever it is and then have a value for that. And you could have a whole bunch of values. And uh, I'll show you how to deal with those things too. So we'll create that action. And, um, and then we're ready to rock. We'll say finish here. Okay, so we'll go over to our Node-RED flow editor. And the first thing I'll do is I'll pull over an inject node and that'll just let me trigger our action. Um, here is where you would do something. You would uh, get, get feedback from a device or, or an input or something like that. Here, here we're just gonna use uh, an inject and then we'll be able to press on that and, and test our integration. And then we'll take a function node and an HTTP node. So we'll make an HTTP request. And then we'll take a debug node as well so we can see the output of that request. We can see what comes back from it. And that's basically it. That's all we need. Those are all the nodes that we need. And we'll just wire these guys up and then here in the function node, we're going to create our, our event, right? So here, this, when we press on this here, it'll create a timestamp. So now message.payload, remember, along these lines here is a message object. And message.payload here will be the timestamp. And we wanna change that. So what we'll do is we could also create our own 
um, key value pairs. So what we'll do is say message dot event, and that's arbitrary. I'm just calling it event. You could call it whatever you want, and we'll set that equal to whatever our request was in IFTTT. And I think we said test request. So that's the name of the event. And then for the values, we'll put that in the payload because the payload will get passed as the body of the HTTP request. And that's where we'll put the values. So we'll just say message.payload is equal to, and then we'll create a JSON object. So this is JSON notation, and all that means is key value pairs. So a key will be value one, and the value will just say test value. And we could create a whole bunch of those, as many as you want. We'll say value two, and we'll set that equal to test value two. So that's looking good. Um, I'll open this up so we can have a better look at it. So we have our event and we have the payload. Remember the payload will always be sent as the body of the message. And that's where we're putting these values in there. And the event is just something I created so that I can access that as a variable. And you'll see how we're gonna use that in a second. So we'll go over here to our HTTP request node. And then here in the request, we're going to make a post request. We're gonna make a post request with a particular URL. Now I'll put the URL in the blog post below this so that you could use it. And basically here it is, it's maker.ifttt.com slash trigger slash, and then the event. So what this will do, it'll take the event key or the the value for the the value for the event key value pair and it'll put that right in there okay so that's a nice way to use variables in um in these strings that we need to deal with great and then with key and we need to get our key from ifttt so and remember and that's all we need to do the message.payload will get sent as the body automatically and we're getting out the event variable right here so we'll go back to ifttt and we'll find our key. And I just have a link for that here. And again, I'll put that in the, uh, I'll put that in the blog post with the video. So it's services, maker webhook settings, and your key is the last part of this URL right here. So we'll take that, drop that in right at the end there, and then we're done. So we could deploy this and we'll open the debug tab and we'll click that timestamp. It's really just a trigger. And we get the feedback. That's the feedback from IFTTT. And then we could go back to our IFTTT account. And we'll, uh, we'll find that recipe that we made. We'll click over here on the gear. View activity log. And here you could see that that applet ran. And we'll look at the details. And we could see the event name. And the values that were passed along with it. And I should be receiving an email because that's what we asked IFTTT to do. So what do you think? Pretty cool stuff, right? Now, to go in the other direction from IFTTT to talk to your local system is a little more complicated because you need a publicly available IP address or URL. And if you have a local control processor, that's um, just not doable. So you'll need some kind of middleware in the middle. And I happen to be working on a project to take care of that. So if you're interested in that, let me know and we could get you on the beta testing list. But overall, please leave some comments. Let me know what you think and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe and start learning new AV programming techniques. Take care.